ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either. You are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. Look, today's podcast is not the podcast that I had intended to give. I told y'all I was going to the Versus last night to see Omarion and Mario, and I'm going to talk about that. But I held the podcast. My intent was to tape when I got home. I didn't realize it was going to run so late. I didn't get home until 1130. And literally the venue is around the corner from my house. I went to pick up my tickets at like five something. And then me and a friend had um, dinner and cocktails at Fixin's, which was right next door to where I had to pick the tickets up. So we ended up getting in the venue at like, I don't know, 730, something like that. We took our leisurely time eating. But yeah, it ran long. But we'll get to that. My intention was basically, because it's Friday, you know, we got the weekend coming. There's no, or there wasn't any big news. And so this is supposed to be just like a clowning episode and a recap of last night's versus, which was, many people are calling it the worst versus ever, which it could be because there was a lot of singers that, that they could not hit their notes. I intended to have like a good kiki session for this episode. A few other good black news things that I wanted to talk about. This recap of the um, the menswear Louis Vuitton show. Because it was black as fuck. But I got up this morning to record this episode. And I was scrolling through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Looking at basically everyone else clowning last night's verses. Like that's all that's on most of my platforms at that time of day. And my friend sent me a text. It was a link. And it said, what the fuck? And she sends me silly shit. Um, and I just assumed, like everyone else, it was, you know, something it was a meme from last night's verses that there's one of, of Ray J. I don't think he's intending to do the George Jefferson dance, but that's that's how it is coming across. He sounded like shit last night. And I was like, did he always sound like shit? Like, he, has he always just been like a studio singer? I don't know what's going on with my phone right now. I probably need to restart it. But it took forever for this link to load. And the link was to a story on CNN saying that Roe v. Wade had been overturned. I screamed. I, I, it's, that was my first reaction. I just, I just screamed. And I was like, are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? My neighbors had got to hate me. Like, I, like, our walls are concrete. Like, I never hear my neighbors. And I was like, maybe they don't have, like, cancer emotions and they don't, like, randomly shout. I was like, they've got to hear me sometimes. So I'd be in here just cursing up a storm. And it's crazy, my reaction, because, and everyone's reaction, because I think everyone, at least everyone who was invested in Roe v. Wade not being overturned, seems to be having the same reaction where it's, it's shocking, like we can't believe this just happened, which, I mean, we got a heads up about this about a month ago. Someone who works for the Supreme Court had leaked a draft of of the, the opinion that overturned it, but it leaked a draft and Politico covered it. And we talked about it on here. Every major news outlet talked about it. Every major publication talked about it. So we knew that overturning it was coming. There was a mass outrage when the Politico story leaked about the possibility of, of Roe v. Wade. Not, maybe not even possibility is the right word, but the inevitability because it was a draft opinion from the majority. But it happened. And it's, it's just a gigantic, what the fuck? And my first reaction, I posted it on Instagram and I made a comparison to Handmaid's Tale, which if you watch Handmaid's Tale, um, it's a really, really good show on Hulu. It's about America repealing, well, not repealing, repealing is not the right word. It's about, what's the word? Religious extremists. I think that's the word I want to use. But religious extremists taking over America And robbing women of their rights and essentially forcing all women, including white women, to exist as black women did during slavery, which it's never lost on me that, you know, when white women watch this show and they're like horrified, their like worst case scenario is being treated like black women. That's never lost to me. And they're like, oh, my God, this is like the worst thing that could ever happen, that you could be white and treated like a black person. Okay, but this shit is real. Like, this is not a really good show and a really classic book. This is like real life. Like these mofos really overturned Roe v. Wade. You know, someone DM'd me and they were like, you know, there's a lot of hysteria in your comments. And, you know, I think it's worth mentioning. She was like, abortion is not banned throughout the country. It's just, you know, gone back to the states. So each state gets to decide whether they want to 
have abortions legal and what the parameters are for abortion. I mean, worthy distinction, a worthy technicality to mention, but there's also several states that are going to outright ban abortions, even in cases of, of incest or, or rape or where the pregnancy may, um, may threaten the life of the mother, like no abortions under any circumstance or the time limit to get an abortion. We spoke previously about what's going on in Texas. Is it six weeks? I think that you can get you can only get an abortion in the first six weeks you're pregnant. After that, you're screwed. It's either six weeks or eight weeks. But whatever the time period is, it's a time when most people wouldn't even realize that they're actually pregnant. Like you had to notice that your period didn't come and then you may have to like scrape together funds and or make a decision about whether you want to, you know, continue the pregnancy or terminate the pregnancy. Like for a lot of people, that's not an overnight decision. I have many friends that have had abortions. And just to be transparent, I've never been pregnant. I've actively spent for, for the duration of time that I've you know been sexually active. I've I've actively taken measures to prevent pregnancy, and even on those hail mary chances where you know like I you know practice the pullout method. Do not recommend. More than half the population exists because of the pullout method. Do not try at home or anywhere else. I actively prayed not to be pregnant and carried my ass to the pharmacy and got Plan B. You know just in case. There's been, you know, condom break moments. There have been condom loss moments. That mofo insisted on magnums and didn't have magnum sized meat. That happened twice. And I was like, no, nigga. I was like, I paid for the first plan B. You pay for the second one. And get some condoms that actually fit if you expect me to have sex with you and you don't even have a big dick. Like, stop it. <sighs> but, yeah, I, I, I shouldn't be shocked. No one really should be shocked. We, we got advance warning that this was coming. It still just feels absolutely crazy. I was looking at this map that the Washington Post did, and it was a list of states that will more than likely allow women access to abortion. Essentially, it's the Northeast, Maine down to New York, New Jersey, Delaware, not Pennsylvania, Colorado, New Mexico, and then the entire West Coast plus Alaska and Nevada, everywhere else, like the entire South, the whole Bible Belt, out. Most of the Midwest, out. Middle America, out. It's going to be very hard for women to get abortions there. There's a few states that are expected to ban abortions within weeks or months. That's Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, Ohio, Indianapolis, and what's IA? Is that Iowa? I guess it's got to be. Okay. Not Indianapolis, Indiana. Jesus. And then states that will definitely ban abortion within one month. Most of the Bible Belt, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, North and South Dakota, Wyoming, Utah. No, is that Idaho? What's IA? No, that's Idaho. The other one's Iowa. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to you. Under his eye? May the Lord open? Um, yeah. I very much wish I had something more profound or encouraging to say or some sort of solution or list of resources or or some such to offer in this moment. This is brand new information. I'm currently still processing emotionally. I haven't had a chance to do research to learn all the ways that women and men and men are, are impacted here. I need to better inform myself. Mostly what I have right now is just a big bag of what the fuck. And I think that's what a lot of people have right now. Like, even though we knew it was coming, I guess we should have prepared. Because even when that, um, even when that, that opinion leaked to Politico, it was said at the time that the decision was supposed to come down this summer. Like, we're in, what, day two of official summer? So right on time. And still, I feel very um, caught off guard. I guess it was one of those things. It's like... You know, somebody could tell you, like, you know, the sky is going to fall and it's going to fall in 30 days. And you're just kind of like, the sky will never fall. Like, get, get control of yourselves. Like, you're hyperbably in losing your mind. The sky is not falling. And then the fucking sky falls. And you're like, holy fuck, the sky fell. And it's like, God damn it, we told you. And I'm like, I know you told me, but still, I ain't think the fucking sky was going to fall. And yet it has. Your boy Clarence Thomas, I, I can't claim him, so maybe you can. Um... On the heels of Roe v. Wade, knowing that this is going to send like major shock waves and protests and outrage and all of those things, instead of just letting people like take the day, just and literally take the day process, maybe take the weekend, 
They released the decision on Friday morning, but instead of just letting people take the take the weekend, Clarence Thomas wrote a concurring opinion, obviously in support. He was one of the people that did vote for overturning Roe v. Wade. He decided to write his own concurring opinion and was like, you know, while we're at it, thinking about Roe v. Wade, like we should also think about same sex marriage, contraception. And there was one other one, obviously not interracial marriage because, you know, he's got a white wife. But contraception and same sex marriage were the ones that stood out for me. And I was like, what do you mean overturn contraception? What, what, like women's right to birth control? Like, you, huh? Like, you don't want women to have abortions or access to birth control? Like, what the fuck are y'all trying to do? I think this is a very important issue to to speak up on. Like, just so we're clear, I actually don't have skin in the game in this one. Like, I'm 43. Me getting pregnant without, like, some sort of medical intervention, I mean, it could happen. Shit happens. I mean, I still have a period, but the likelihood of me getting pregnant right now is actually very low. The only states in America that I will actually seriously consider living in are California, New York, and D.C. They're all pretty liberal bastions. I also am am financially privileged in the point that if I did get pregnant and I lived in a state where abortion was not legal, I would have the means to go elsewhere to seek medical support, support, because that's what this is to me. To me, this is a strictly health medical issue. I would have the means to go to another place, the health care that I needed would be available to me. That said, even if you are someone who is more or less unaffected either by the state that you live in or your financial situation, um, this is one of those situations where like this is all hands on deck. I know when I'm approaching a burnout phase, when I lose all motivation to do anything, including the simplest of tasks. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burnt out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, irritability, fatigue, and more. Now, we associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burnt out. BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. I am a huge advocate of therapy, especially if you are stressed out, but even if you're not. The same way you go to a doctor for your physical, even when nothing's wrong, it's fine to go to therapy just to make sure everything's okay. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. And I love this part because if you're like me, you don't always like to be on camera. BetterHelp makes sure you literally don't have to see anyone and they don't have to see you if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash ratchet. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash ratchet. I like to think of, and I always get this gentleman's name wrong. He's the poet. You know I can't pronounce this man's name. It's Martin, N-I-E-M-O-L-L-E-R. Most people would know this poem, even if you don't know the author. This was written um, during the Holocaust. It says, first they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. I'm quoting this, um, and most of it is speaking to the choir because most of my audience is black women. Black women, by and large, do the work. We we get it. We're double marginalized, academic term, by being black and being a woman. So we get what it's like to, to be othered, and we have empathy for other people who may be also othered for various reasons. We tend to think about the bigger picture and, and the community. And we also know that shit rolls downstream. So if you don't take care of of other people who are less marginalized, you definitely ain't going to take care of us. We organize the protests and we go to the polls and we raise the voices and and all of those things. So telling black women, even though even those who are not directly affected by this ruling, that they need to speak up and they need to fight the good fight and they need to vote. It's actually kind of pointless because we do the shit. So, you know, most of this podcast I use to address strictly to Black women, that's that's the target audience. Like the person in my head that I'm speaking to when I create this podcast is another black woman. I'm speaking to my friend circle, the people I, you know, hang out with and go on vacations with and brunch with and all of that. 
But for the non-black women, I usually don't address y'all, but for the non-black women who are listening to this podcast, I imagine that you probably have some liberal leanings if you found yourself here. But I would encourage you, if even if you are not directly affected by this new ruling, this is not the time to, to sit it out. Take a beat, take a day, cry and rage and, and WTF and post on social media. But tomorrow, if there's a protest, go to it. If there's an organization that you can donate to that can help fund women who need health care that doesn't exist in their states, send a donation. Vote, goddammit, vote, goddammit, vote, goddammit, in the upcoming election. We, we need people in office who actually will protect our best interests. And this ain't it. Just like these mofos done gone and overturned Roe v. Wade, something needs to happen. Order, can Congress pass a something? And this is where, again, because this is a, a new revelation as of this morning, I haven't had a chance to do my research and look at what the possibilities are. These are, but if there is something Congress can do, if a bill can be made into law that that protects abortion in every state, that, that makes sure that every woman has access to abortion, if there's something that can be done, we need to figure out what the fuck that is. We talked about this, and again, when when the draft leaked about a month ago, about the consequences of what will happen if and when and now. Um, Roe v. Wade is is overturned. Women will still seek abortion. Women who are pregnant who don't want to be pregnant, it creates a desperate situation. Women will start doing crazy shit in order to not be pregnant. We talked about the woman. There's a very popular image that was used in abortion propaganda for a while, but it's a it's a white woman who's was abandoned in a hotel room, left bloody on the floor. She and her partner had tried to give her an abortion and she hemorrhaged, bled out and died. And he left her. He just left her there. But those are the kind of stories that are going to start popping up again. Earlier today, she put it on her social media page. She made a video. I don't think she'll mind me mentioning it. But my friend, Kim Fox, what is she, the Cook County Attorney General? So over the prosecutions of R. Kelly, Jesse Smollett, and, and a bunch of other people. But those are like her, probably her two most famous cases. But she posted a video earlier today, and she talked about having an abortion when she was a young woman because she had the legal right to. I don't need to explain why she felt she needed to have it. She had the legal right to do so, and she exercised that right, and so she had one, period. But she also talked about how her mother didn't have the legal right to an abortion, and her mother drank turpentine because she didn't want to be pregnant anymore. But that's the type of crazy shit that you're going to start hearing stories about again, is, is women drinking turpentine and shoving wire hangers up their vaginas, trying to, like, you know, scrape their insides out and hemorrhaging. Those are the kind of crazy ass stories that you're going to start hearing again in the states where abortion is banned. This is a tragic fucking day. You know, what's um, interesting is this woman from South Africa came on my page today on my Instagram page where where I was talking about um, Roe v. Wade being overturned. And she said, um, essentially, like, America looks crazy right now. I responded to her half joking and I was like, yo, American women need political asylum. Like, you know, we need refugee status, like help, send help. So she was like, I mean, like, you know, I'd love to help, but, you know, it's really not much better here. And she went on to detail like the prevalence of rape in South Africa. And then we got into this conversation where we were like, where is it really safe to be a black woman? I don't know where that place exists. Because America is crazy, not even looks crazy, because America is crazy. And everyone knows that I'm, I'm moving to Ghana very shortly. People were half joking or whatever, like, you're going to Ghana. You're getting the fuck out. Good for you. Like, take me with you. Ghana is not a utopia. Ghana is sexist as fuck in a way that would be largely appalling to a lot of Americans. I can navigate it a little bit better because of the privilege of my American accent and my blue passport. My friend who lives in Ghana, I think one of her parents is from Ghana. She was raised in the States and then she moved back to Ghana. Um, So she has an American accent. She was telling me the story about how she went to this restaurant. They were running low on jollof rice. And she said the waitress went on to say, so we're only serving jollof rice for the men. The women have to eat white rice. And she was like, excuse me? Like you're determining like what I eat based on like on my sex? What? The waitress was very adamant. And she she was like, yes, because we're running low. And so basically the jollof rice, which is the best rice, you know, tasty, delicious, prime, prime rice, goes to the men. 
And so that's a small example, like in the grand scheme of things, like which type of rice you eat at a restaurant that's running low is not like, you know, the end of life. Right. But it, that's kind of not even kind of that's part of the mindset of the country is that men are more important and men take priority to patriarchy. America's one, too. It's just laid out a little more blatant in Ghana. People will say shit to your face that you're just like, I'm sorry, what? They look down on you because you're a woman, which I say this and people are like, aren't you a feminist? Like, and you going to move over there? Like, how that going to work, D? How that going to work? Racism not on the table. Not on the table in the same way. There's degrees of racism because there's white people. It's, it's a different dynamic. And I'll talk about it more when I get there and like live in it. But taking the threat of police violence and the, and the microaggressions that you face dealing with white people from the time that you step out of your door off the table It takes away like 50% of your problems. So even though sexism is more heightened in Ghana, like racism is is so much lesser that it's actually easier to exist. The double whammy of racism and sexism becomes unbearable at a certain point. Um, But take racism off the table, some sexism shit, you're just like, eh. It's just not as big a deal to me so far. We'll see what it's like when I live in it as opposed to like when I'm vacationing in it. But the point I was making is, I don't know what place there is that is safe for black women, like in the world. Like I've been to places that celebrate black women, like Bahia um, in Brazil celebrates black women. It's like living in the pages of essence. I was only there for 10 days. I lived well. I ate well. I drank well. But I also didn't go out at night alone. And I was also instructed to take all my jewelry off. And they were like, oh, no, like if you're standing like at a party, at a club, whatever, or somebody will walk up to you and snatch your chain or come by on a, um, a moped and snatch your chain right off your neck. Just like pull it off your neck. So I would suggest you don't wear jewelry. I'm like, oh, shit. No hoop earrings. None of that. So you got statues of black women everywhere. You praise black women everywhere. But black women could also get robbed everywhere. I don't think that counts as safety. <sighs> It can be very hard to work out sometimes, especially if you're going to the gym. Workout classes often fill up quickly and it's easy to get shut out. What I love most about Peloton is you never have to worry about your favorite class being full. Peloton has thousands of live and on-demand classes, so you can always keep it fresh. From cycling and strength training to yoga and running. Experiment with new types of movement judgment-free at a level and pace that feels good for you. Even better, Peloton is fun and you're more likely to stick to a workout routine you enjoy. So Peloton makes every class fun. It feels like you're hanging out with friends and nothing gets you moving like the perfect song, right? Every Peloton class is set to a bomb playlist. In the mood for a ride full of club bangers, how about an EDM run? Or maybe a yoga flow class with soul music. Whatever you're into, you'll find the perfect soundtrack for your workout on Peloton. Right now is the perfect time to try out Peloton. The Peloton Bike Plus is now $500 less. It's best price yet, including free delivery and setup. And there are more game-changing prices available on the original Peloton bike and Peloton tread. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. Now is the time to seek pleasure and abundance in all areas of your life, including what you eat. With Saqqara, you get nutrient-dense meals, snacks, and supplements that nourish your body without ever sacrificing taste or quality. Sakara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. Their nutritionally designed chef-crafted breakfasts, lunches, and dinners are made with powerful plant-based ingredients, helping boost your energy, support your digestion, curb your sugar cravings, and get your skin glowing. Plus, I love how I can customize my meal program to fit my needs. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash ratchet or enter code ratchet at checkout. That's Sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash ratchet to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash ratchet. Not the podcast episode I was intending to give. I wanted to talk about dumb shit. Can we talk about dumb shit? Because today feels heavy and I'm, I'm, I feel heavy and, and I, I'm over heavy. I don't want to be heavy right now. 
Talk about this versus. We can talk about this versus. Oh, wait. Do we have good black news? We do have good black news, but I feel like most of it can be saved for next week and the sky won't fall. The, the versus was much and most and many things. My friend who works for Versus, I hit him up and I was like, I need tickets to the show. And he got me good seats in a VIP area. So thank you, friend. But he hit me midway through the verses, and he was like, honestly, D, like, what do you think? He knew I was going to review the show, and he wanted to get in advance of what I was going to say before either I got on here or got on Instagram. And I was like, honestly, I'm highly entertained. And I was like, there, there are shirtless black men with abs singing to me. I'm very easy to amuse. That was the truth. I was very entertained. It was one of the most entertaining verses yet. There are memes and quotables galore. I told you I got there a little too early. So, because even in the information they sent over, like to pick up the tickets, they were like, well, Omarion and Mario don't go on until, I want to say, they said like 6.50, 7.50. And I was like, that's a little late for the people of the East, is it not? I saw a lot of people who were just like, girl, I'm going to bed. It's like 11 o'clock and this shit ain't popping yet. Fair. Fair. But we got there maybe like 7-ish. I wasn't really trying to see like the pre-show. I had no interest in seeing Ray J, Sammy, Pleasure P, Bobby Valentino. If their names had not been plastered, Ray J, I know who Ray J is. I know Ray J because he's Brandy's brother. But the other two, Sammy and Pleasure P, like if they didn't have their names on, on the on the wall behind them, I wouldn't know who they were. So we got there and, and they were still performing and it, it was running a little long and I was like, I'm good. I don't know who came out. Was it Ray J? Yes. Okay. So that's what happened. Let me, let me I'm, I'm, it's coming all back together. Just stay with me. I'm sober now, but I had two tequilas before I went, before I got to the show last night. And then these stranger people were singing songs that I barely recognized. And then Ray J came out. They all clowned the fuck out of him. They were singing Ray J's song for him. Ray J is the most popular of, of everyone on the stage because he's Brandy's brother and he's done other stuff outside of R&B and he's on a reality show. So they were clowning him a little bit and he tried not to look visibly mad because then it looks like he doesn't have a sense of humor. But they were actually doing Ray J a favor by singing his song because once Ray J got on his own mic and tried to sing One Wish, he sounded fucking terrible. I was like, I sound better singing with a cold. And y'all, again, have heard me sing. Like, my heart is in it. My heart is in it. He picked up his son, like, right before he had to sing his his very important part. He knew he sounded bad because afterward he was like, you know, I know, you know, my vocals were off. Like, I was holding my son. And I was like, I don't don't really feel like holding your child really throws your vocals off that much. And if that's the case, then perhaps you shouldn't have actively gone over to the side and told your son to come to you to be picked up. It's not like the kid ran out on stage and he was like, oh, let me grab the kid and and pick him up because he's here. Like you went and beckoned the kid to you. He didn't want to come. Then you went and went into the side of the crowd and grabbed him and took him and then sang off key, way off key, and then tried to blame it on that sweet baby. And I was like, that sweet baby ain't got shit to do with it. Man, you just can't sing. Sammy sounded okay. Bobby Valentino sounded okay. Pleasure P, like... their, their actual performance skills sucked. They actually sounded okay. They, they weren't offensive to my ears. Ray J offended my ears. But after Ray J couldn't hit them notes, like I, I turned to my friend and I was like, can we find like the bar? So we went and had more tequila. I was lit in that bitch. So let me say this. Last week's episode, I told y'all, I was like, I'm so excited. Omarion, Omarion, Omarion. I think I told y'all I had like dinner plans with a friend. We had this dinner on the books for like two weeks and I had to hit him 48 hours in advance. And I was like, I am so very sorry, but I must go see Omarion at this versus. Like I'm far too excited. I wanted to see a versus. It's on my bucket list before I move. I have to go see this. And he was like, of course, I understand. And he was like something about you being, and he said it to me, he was like this press to see Omarion, he was like, it's very endearing. He was like, it just really doesn't match with like your overall personality. And I was like, I know, but I must see it. I was thinking of like video Omarion. I was thinking about like, I don't feel no ways about it, Omarion. The, what's the word? The persona of Omarion is, is what I was really thinking of. In person, Omarion did not sound hideous. He did not sound bad. He also did not sound good, which is problematic 
when you're an R&B singer. He also didn't do all his like Omarion dancing. Like he did like a little, a little something here and there and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, maybe he's afraid to really break out the dance moves that he's most known for. Because while in his head, he might think that like, oh, I'm getting it. I'm doing it. Like I'm feeling myself like, yeah, he might come across looking like the most recent videos that we've seen of maybe Genuine. Genuine really thought that he was like giving it. But you could also see in his body that he was not doing it. And then they put it by the clip in which like, you know, he's like 20 something back in the 90s making those moves. One of these is not like the other. Like there was his heart was in it, but his body was 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 not it was stiff. It don't move like he used to. And that's fine. We all age. I'm, I'm very mindful of, of criticizing like the movement of the body. I'm a woman of a certain age. I can't dip like I used to. My knees, my knees. Like I, I don't even just feel it. I can hear them. I can hear them. Justin Timberlake. I don't fuck with Justin Timberlake anymore. But there was a time where I was very, very fond of Justin Timberlake. But Justin Timberlake used to be a white boy who could dance. Justin Timberlake went to the, the Something in the Water Festival in D.C. I don't know who told him about Beat Your Feet. It's people dancing to go-go music. But someone told him about Beat Your Feet, and he thought that, like, doing a river dance in khakis was, was the way to go. I don't, I don't know what he was thinking. But it was unrhythmic, and it was horrible. And I was like, see, guess God don't like ugly. He stole your rhythm. He had some at some point, but God took his rhythm. He was ugly to black women. God took his rhythm. And then last night, like, Ray J, he did that little George Jefferson shuffle. I cannot stop watching. Like, it is hilarious to me. But, you know, Ray J thought he was really getting it. And, and what he was doing was not getting it. It was, it was something else. His, his body seemed to have betrayed him. So maybe Omarion was like, you know what? And he's not even a man of a certain age. I don't even think Omarion's 40. But Omarion, like, he just seemed, like, very timid about, like, trying to dance. But the problem is you can't really sing. And now you're not dancing. So, like, what are you giving? Which, unfortunately, wasn't much. He, he had to resort to, like, antics. Like, he brought out, just like, some crump dancers. Because he was trying to give you a, um, what's the movie he was in? You Got Served. And he and his brother were, like, eating watermelon like it was pussy. Um, which, apparently, they did on Instagram a, a few months ago. And everyone was really into it. And I was like, it didn't really land on stage. Everyone was just kind of like, what the fuck are you doing? It came across as desperate to me. He brought out Jeremiah, who sounded... I like Jeremiah's songs. I like the studio engineered, edited version of Jeremiah's singing. Jeremiah, somebody told me he had COVID. And they were like, well, that's maybe why he didn't sound so good. And I was like, then he should have stayed his ass home. Because he sounded fucking terrible. Tank, who I love. I adore Tank. I think Tank is wonderful. I have a Tank story. I actually have two Tank stories. But one of them, my mother, my mother had to remove Tank's hand from my arm. And it was very platonic. I had on this snakeskin leather jacket that I got from probably from Century 21. It was beautiful. It is beautiful. I still have it. And it looks like money, even though I got it at a discount. But he was like rubbing my jacket. And I want to say it was probably like my forearm that he was rubbing. Like it wasn't anything like inappropriate. It wasn't anywhere suggestive. But we were in the green room. I want to say for like a rise, maybe. My mother had come with me. And I know him again because he used to come up to Essence all the time. So he starts rubbing my jacket and he's like, what is this? And he's like rubbing it. And my mother removed his hand from my arm. And I was like, mommy. And she was like, you are an engaged woman. And I was like, oh my God, he might've been a married man. But I was like, it, it's my forearm. And my mother was having none of it. I, I love Tank. I think he's freaking amazing. Um, he didn't sound so good last night. I love him. I, I play much Tank. I have, I have streamed much Tank. He didn't sound good last night. He needed a little me, 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 me. In, in the back, or, or some, some lemon or something. Every, a lot of people did. Everybody except Mario, really. He needed a little, he needed a little lemon, hot tea. He wasn't at his best. I, I've heard him before where he sounds amazing. Last night was, was not his night. But he came out, which Mario was, was displeased with. He was also displeased with Jeremiah. If you watch the clip, in the actual verses clip, when Jeremiah is singing, Mario is in the background going, no, no. No, like he sounds outraged. He was like, y'all niggas sound crazy. <laughs> Which is so rude. But like, did he lie? <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. And then like Mario just, <sighs> you know that Jay-Z meme 
that everyone always points to. And they were like, it was like the moment where Jay-Z knew he had to leave Rockefeller or he needed new friends or he was better than this. The real life story behind the clip is, is entirely different. But Jay-Z is just standing there looking like, why the fuck am I here? And then everyone around him is just like doing the most. And I kind of felt like that was Mario, like most of the night. He out sang everyone, like even the people who sounded decent. Pleasure P and Sammy actually sounded nice. But Mario sounded amazing. And he's clearly from a different school of performance than everyone else who had been on the stage, including Sammy, including Pleasure P, Ray J especially. He's just cut from a different cloth. Like you can tell that he was trained and groomed. And I was like, I don't know if that's like you sang in the church coming up because the church will groom you as such. I was like, I don't know if this is like, you know, Clive Davis. Clive Davis got his people to you and they taught you how to get on the stage and perform. But he performs like an old school R&B act. The ones that be sticking around for 60 some odd years like that. He wasn't just like a nigga walking around the stage in circles with a bunch of his boys. Like he looked purposeful when he performed. He looked like he was performing as opposed to just, you know, I'm just up here moving around singing. He sounded good. He looked damn good. He's a little thick. And I was like, like, I like, I like it lots. I have no complaints. I don't mean that no kind of disrespectful way. He looked good. Very good. I liked everything that I saw, but no, he was sounding good. He was, he was singing good. He was looking good. He sang, um, what's his biggest song? You Should Let Me Love You, which is like the soundtrack for companionship, dick, and protection. Because he changed the lyrics at one point about, like, you should let me fuck you. And I was like, sir, sir, I got too much tequila in my system for you to be singing this vulgarness towards me. You're talking that good talk to me right now with, with liquor in my system. Stop that. I'm trying to keep it decent tonight. I had no idea his mouth was that slick. Somebody did point out to me, and they were like, oh, no, like, Mario's polished, but Mario's also like a nigga from Baltimore. And I was like, as I saw, as I saw. He sunned them people all night. Like he told them to their face, you sound terrible. You can't sing. <laughs> Do better. And nobody even tried to say anything to him. And at the end of the night, like they made up or whatever. They made up. They did like a dap and a hug. Black men coming together. They made it like a feel good moment. Mario meant every trash word that he said to Amarion all night. Like he had no respect for that man. And he kept saying, he was like, I just came here to sing good r and B. I I don't have no gimmicks. I just came here to sing good R&B and did. I didn't know half the song, but he sounded good and hit high notes. And I was like, oh, okay, let me go get on title and start streaming. And all day today, on up and down social media, for the, for the folks who are not talking about Roe v. Wade, everyone's talking about Ray J can't sing. Omarion look crazy. And goddamn, who knew Mario could sing like that? I was like, if this man don't drop a new single and meet the moment, I'm excited about your voice. I want to give you money. For to listen to you sing, sir, please hit me with a point of sale. Please do yourself and me a solid. Please. That's what I want from you. <sighs> There's more to be said. I think that's enough. There's so much more to talk about, but we'll get into it next week. I'm going to chop this up. And then I got to go run some errands. I got to get boxes. Finish packing up this damn house. I got stuff coming up. So I need to get as much packing out of the way as I possibly can. All right, we will speak again next week. I've told you this a million times before. If you would like merchandise from Ratchet and Respectable, we still have merch for Cut the Check and Interested Men Act Interested. So that's DemetriaLLucas.com for your Ratchet and Respectable merchandise. Otherwise, we'll talk again on Tuesday. Okay, bye.